Messenger. We're back in our video. This was a well-requested video too. A lot of people have been asking me, I've been looking at the comments, y'all be saying, you know, Mark, make a video on spiritual gifts. You know, how do I know and what are the signs, okay? And um, I didn't, when, when, my, when my testimony, I had no idea what a spiritual gift was, none of that. And we well, am speaking too fast. That's number five sign. I should have made that number one, bro. Dang it. But it's not, all my signs, never in order. But this is important to, before I start the video too, what, what are spiritual gifts? Talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, okay? So because, I mean, keep this in mind too, the devil could bless you with spiritual gifts. You know, witches and warlocks practicing witchcraft, you know, and black magic and all that type of stuff. That, those are dark, you know, because remember, the devil is a copycat. He, he likes to imitate what God does, okay? So God could bless you with spiritual gifts, what I'm going to go over, and the devil can too, okay? So always keep in mind, this is all biblical in this channel because I understand when you talk about spiritual stuff, that's when the witches come out. That's when the new agers come out. So this channel is 100% Holy Spirit led, all right? So number one, a spiritual gift is wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, the gift of prophecy, the gift of discernment, to discern spirits. That's why I'd be telling you guys, people be asking me, you know, Mark, how do I better my discernment? It all, it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And how do you get these gifts I'm going over? You have to ask God for it and pray. And also I'll go over the list too. And uh, speaking in tongues, the impartation of tongues too, okay? So these are the, uh, the spiritual gifts listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, okay? Let's get it, let's go. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. The number one sign, which is not an order, of a spiritual gift is what God will do is he will isolate you. I'm speaking with my testimony too, okay? God will isolate you before he reveals to you what your spiritual gift is. And a lot of times, guys, we don't we, we had it the whole time. <laughs> we had it the whole time. But I'm, I'm, I'm speaking too fast. That's the number fifth sign. I should have made it number one. But God will isolate you, okay? Let's say, let's say before, uh, remember, before you become a chosen one, remember, because it's all a process. Before you're chosen, you're called. As the midst of God's calling you, he will remove all distractions. He will cut off all people who went meant to go with you, bro. All, uh, and what I mean by that is that the level that God's taking you, not not the, not everyone could go. Not your family, not your friends, not your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Not everyone could go where God's taking you. And you have to accept that because some people, they, they want to hold on to these devils. They want to hold on to the world. But when you have a spiritual a gift, it's a high calling from God. You gotta let you gotta let it go, bro. You have to trust God, and I know it's it's like cliche to say that, but you really do, you know, because God's plan is better than your plan in life. There's a lot of times where I trust in my own plan over God's plan, and all I did was just lead to wasting time, or maybe even destruction. Okay, so always keep in mind. So God will isolate you. He talks about this in Proverbs chapter 18, verse one. It says that um, through a desire of a man. Sorry, my fault. Through a desire of a man, having separated himself, seek an intermittal with all wisdom. Okay, so God will isolate you, not forever, it's just usually for a season, a couple months, or maybe or, or it could be a longer time, but it's not going to be forever. Okay, but God will isolate you. And when you're, when you're in an isolation season, when you're in isolation mode, okay, you're now learning more about God. You're now, you know, you're now praying more, getting more into your scriptures. Maybe you're doing some fasting. You're building up your spirit up. Okay, and in the midst of all that, you're seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. And, you know, in due time, you're going to see that God has a special calling on your life, okay? And remember, also, these spiritual gifts, they're not used to be boastful. They're not used to be to you to be prideful, to feel like you're better than the next brother or sister. That's not what spiritual gifts are for. Spiritual gifts are used to edify the body, to edify the body of Christ, and to edify believers and even unbelievers because, you know, even the unbelievers need this word, okay? We were all once unbelievers at one point in our time, okay? All right, so number two is... You have a desire, okay? Yes, you have a desire for a spiritual gift. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. It says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy, okay? So it says, follow after charity, follow after love, and desire spiritual gifts. So when you have a desire for spiritual gifts, you have a desire for wisdom. Remember, the Bible says to seek wisdom more than you seek gold. You have a desire for knowledge. You have a desire for faith, okay? You have a desire for prophecy and all these things, okay? You have that desire. When you have the desire and you're, you're aligning your desire through your faith and through your faith, you're aligning it through your works. You're showing God that you're ready. You're showing God, okay, there's a sin that I'm doing that I have to give up. There's a stronghold that I have to fight. And now, yes, we, we, we fall short for the glory of God, but we're not a slave to our sin. We, we, we surrender to God. We don't surrender to our sin, okay? We bow down before the throne. We bow down before God. And if there is a problem, there's a, a sin that we're struggling with, we fight it off. Okay, we're warriors of God, man. We're not going out here making excuses or, nah, we ain't doing that. Okay, we, we are the strong warriors of God and us people who have the spiritual gifts, we know what our calling is and we're going to exercise it to our best of our ability. And yes, you got to understand, when they, when you start to see your spiritual gift and you start to exercise it, the devil's going to come do what he does. But 
It doesn't even matter because we're ready. We're war ready. We have the armor of God on and we're ready for these demons and devils who come to try to destroy us. Okay. So yes, you have the desire. You have the desire to, uh, to prophecy. You have the desire for spiritual gifts. Okay. Number three is God will use other people to tell you yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I remember, I'll never forget this day. And my mom, she would always push me to go to church. I was never really like a church type of person, even still today. Now, if you go to church and if you find uh, the church that's, you know, that has sound doctrine, I'm not against that. Just for me, I just never was a church person. And my mom took me to this church. And this is probably, the, out of all the churches I've been to in my life, this church was, you could feel the anointing. You could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. You, I mean, you could feel it. And I know there's some churches like that. I mean, there's not many of them, but... Uh, this was like an African church. My mom's Eritrean, so I didn't know the language they were speaking. And it was like a five-hour long service, bro. I couldn't stay still. I was always like, it was in Oakland. I was just always walking around. It was like next to Lake Moret. And I didn't like to stay in that building. I didn't know what they were saying. So I just would always just come in and out. And I, when I came back in, they were prophesizing over people's lives. And like the, uh, the pastor, um, the bishop or whatever was, you know, he was prophesying over people's life. And I, they told people, you know, come forward so you could see. And I didn't want to do it, but my mom was like, no, no, you have to go, you have to go. I was like, all right, whatever. So I went up there and he was laying his hands on people and he was prophesizing. And like a lot of people will get like tripped out, maybe because they had like demonic spirits on them. But when he put, when he laid his hand on me, uh, he was speaking in Tigrin. I don't know the language, but like he was saying, I asked my mom, what was he saying? He was like, oh, you have, you're going to be a prophet. Like you have a um, high calling from God, you know, something like that in her language. And I, when he told me that, I didn't even know what a prophet was. I didn't know what a prophecy was. I didn't know what any of that was. But I remember him looking at me like, there's something about this guy. And I was like, wait, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> you know, I didn't know anything at the time, but I was like, why are you looking at me like that? But like, he was like, oh no, like, you know, like he, he saw it before I saw it. And that's how it works. People see your gift. People see your calling before you see it. People see your blessing before you see it, man. That's how it is. Okay, whether they're a prophet or not. But he laid his hand on me. And God used him because that was a seed. I will never forget that day, bro. I'll never forget that day. It was a seed that planted in my mind because I'm like, what does this guy see in me that I don't see in myself? And this is way before I was, uh, before I got, well, actually, I did get baptized a couple years before that. But way before I was in the truth, way before I was on the narrow path, before I knew what sin was, I didn't know anything of the Bible at the time, guys. Literally nothing, okay? All I knew was God and the book of Proverbs. <laughs> That's all I knew. And that I remember as years passed by, I'd always remember, why did that guy say that? You know, it was a seed that planted, man. And look where I'm at now. All praises to the most high. Number four, the fourth sign that you'll see of a spiritual gift, man. Yes, yes, yes. Whoa, yes. Okay. You love to work for God and his kingdom. Okay. We all know what the scripture says. Faith without works. Finish it off for me. Finish it off. I got it. Faith without works is dead, man. When God sees that you're ready to work, you're ready to labor. Okay. Remember the Bible says if a man doesn't work, he shall not eat. When you're ready to work, you're ready to sacrifice, you're ready, you're ready to suffer, you're ready to deny yourself, okay, for, for a purpose, okay, for Christ, for God. He sees that you're ready, okay? And remember, it's, it's a process. You don't just get your gift and the next day, you know, you're, you know, reaching millions of people. It's a process. It's, it's a slow process. It's a journey. Just like when you plant a seed, you don't grow into a tree overnight, okay? It's going to take time. It's going to take seasons, weeks, months. So be patient, okay? Exercise the fruits of, of the Spirit, Long suffering, patience, and keep. I'm telling you, bro, if you have that love to work for God and you're taking action, you're not just saying, Oh, I love to work for God, but you're not doing it, you're not taking no action to do it. So always keep that in mind. You love to work for God. You know that you're, you're, you have faith, and that through your faith, this is exercising work. Okay, it's exercising discipline. Okay, and you know, you love to work for His kingdom. The Bible says to seek God's kingdom daily and His righteousness. All things shall be added to you. That's one of my favorite Bible verses, especially when you're growing through it, because that has that that verse has the answer to a lot of people's problems, man. It's for real. Okay, so that's the fourth sign is that uh, you love to work for God and His kingdom. Okay, and or let's say if you haven't worked for God yet, you have a desire to. You desire you don't want to live for the world no more. You want to live for God, and God sees it because the Bible does say God knows your heart. All right, number five. All right, this should have been number one, man. It was too late. I hit the record button, but the number one five sign is. You have a uh, childhood or pre-salvation signs. And what, I'm, what do I mean by that? Like, okay, there's a Bible verse. Let me read this real quick. This is in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 5 says, Then the, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nation. So be, when, before you were born, God already handpicked you, man. He already chosen you before you even came out the womb. Okay, so and there's a lot of times, guys, where 
you know, a lot of y'all watching this video, you don't even know you're a prophet or a prophetess. You have no idea, okay? But you got to tap into your calling. You got to really be in one with the Holy Spirit, okay? And as for me, I, when I was younger, I would see I would see demonic spirits at a young age. I'm talking about five, six years old. I would be telling my parents. They would call me crazy or weird. Something's wrong with you. But no, I, I, now I look back, I know what I was seeing. I would see into the supernatural. I would see into the spiritual realm. God gave me that gift at a young age. I didn't know why. Like, why am I able to see this at, at times? I would cry, bro, because I didn't want to see the stuff I was seeing at a young age, but hey, God prepared me at a young age. Now it made me see all the things that I went through, all the things that y'all go through in life is actually making you stronger to prepare when your calling does come, you're ready, okay? I'm not afraid of no demon or no devil. <laughs> what? I stomp, on, I stomp on them. Woo! I'm not afraid of that no more because I already battled that when I was like five or six years old. And you know, when I was also too, when I was younger, there was a lot of things that I've seen that for a different video. I, have, I already have videos talking about this, but there's a lot of things that I've seen that really showed like, wow, God was always there at a young age. So you're going to see these signs at a young age, man. So you're going to see the childhood, the childhood and the pre-salvation uh, pre pre signs. So before you're, you know, become chosen, remember, many are called fear chosen. So before you become chosen, you're going to see the signs before time, man. Okay, like I said earlier too, it's all patience. Wait for God. Wait on God. Remember, the Bible says if you wait on God, you are, you'll be exalted like the eagles. You're sore like the eagles with uh, the wings. There's a verse that talks about that in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30, uh, 31. Okay, so these are the five signs of the spiritual gifts and how to know, okay? The spiritual gifts are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I hope you guys got edified from this video. And if you guys made this far, if you guys want to support me, my links are down below in the description. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video on all social media platforms. Here are the signs because sometimes I'd be blocking on my videos so you guys can screenshot it. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.